Hi, I'm Dr. Ed Kleeman. This video is on calcific tendonitis of the shoulder. We'll discuss what that is and how we treat it. Thank you for watching this video. What exactly is calcific tendonitis of the shoulder? So essentially a piece of calcium will form up in the shoulder and can cause pain. Just to review the shoulder anatomy, again, in the shoulder we have the rotator cuff muscles that turn into the rotator cuff tendon that attach to the, the ball, which is called the proximal humerus. Sitting on top of that is a bursa. Now with calcific tendonitis, what happens is a deposit of calcium will form in that tendon and will cause irritation of the tendon as well as the bursa. So why do people get calcific tendonitis? Nobody knows. It's a mystery in medicine. Essentially, a patient will wake up one day with severe pain, have very limited range of motion because of the pain, and then come in and see the doctor. And what typically happens when they come see the doctor, when the doctor takes the history and does the exam, those are the big clues. Almost always just that alone, that story of a patient waking up in severe pain, not wanting to move the arm without any trauma or injury, is a big clue that it's calcific tendonitis. And then the doctor gets an x-ray and we'll see that calcium that we just saw in that previous x-ray. In order to make patients with calcific tendonitis feel better, there are a few things that we can do. The good news is that most of these patients will get better without the need for surgery. So let's start. One of the first things we need to do is calm down the inflammation. How can we do that? So ice, ice fights inflammation. So ice packs on the shoulder are a great way to make you feel better. Number two, we will often do medications called NSAIDs or anti-inflammatories like Advil, Motrin, or Aleve. Those also can help fight the inflammation. Some patients may have some other medical issues that may prevent them from taking those medicines, so they need to check with their doctor first. Now, sometimes the pain can be so severe in those first few days that an actual painkiller is needed. The next thing that we can do to help patients, and we often do do, is an injection, a steroid injection into the shoulder. And a steroid injection is a combination of both the steroid and an anesthetic like lidocaine that's injected into the bursa also to fight that inflammation. So those are a few steps that we can do to fight inflammation. Now again, because the pain is usually significant during the first few days, putting a patient into a sling to let things calm down for a few days can be a great idea. We don't like to leave patients in the sling for too long because then they might get stiff. Another thing that has been done for these patients is needling of the calcium. And what that is is that a needle can be taken and repetitively uh, gone into that calcium to try to break it up. And that's often done under an ultrasound device to make sure that they're going in the right place. So those are some of the very common things that we'll do to calm down the inflammation and to fight this inflammation in the calcium. Once the first phase of this pain is gone and the patient's feeling better, we often will have them work with a physical therapist. And the idea here is to start getting back some of the range of motion because many patients will have lost some of their motion because of the pain and inflammation. When patients are not able to get better with the non-surgical approaches that we've discussed previously, then surgery is a good option to remove the calcium and get rid of the pain. And this type of surgery is usually done arthroscopically. And what we do during this procedure is we first take a needle to localize and find the calcium. And usually when we do that, these little fragments and spicules of calcium will come out and that is what locates the calcium. And then we usually put a shaver in arthroscopically and remove the calcium deposit as well as the irritated bursa. But what happens sometimes is that that calcium has eroded out some of the tendon. So when you remove the calcium, you're left with this defect, essentially a tear of the tendon. And what we do in those situations, we have to repair the rotator cuff. And this we do as a regular rotator cuff tendon repair that you might have seen in one of the other videos we have presented. And here we place in an anchor with sutures. We pass the sutures through the rotator cuff tendon. We tie it down, and this is a double row technique. So this is the first row, and then this is the second row. Here you see our needle coming in on the right side, and we're poking it into that calcium so that's that white flaky stuff and we're poking into the rotator cuff. 
you can see how red it is on the ro rotator cuff. That's inflammation of the bursa. So there you see a big clump of calcium, and you can see it's coming out. Looks almost like toothpaste as we just go ahead and we keep trying to get some of that calcium out. You'll see these big, large flakes of calcium coming out of the rotator cuff tendon. After we've done the needling and got out the calcium, we'll make sure to put a shaver in to clean out all these fragments and floating debris, since those can be very irritating to the shoulder, so we get that out of the shoulder once we're finished doing this part. Here you can see in a case where there was a defect of the rotator cuff tendon after we had removed the calcium because the calcium had eroded into the tendon and so essentially there is a rotator cuff tendon tear. This tendon uh, tear will need to be repaired. We usually first check to see the mobility of the tendon and we can bring it back easily. Then we pass our sutures through and you can see that here in this image. Here you can now see the completed repair of that rotator cuff tendon. Those are the sutures. And here we have a probe that's checking the repair so you can no longer see the defect as we have completely repaired the rotator cuff tendon using a double row technique. We hope you enjoyed our video about shoulder calcific tendonitis. We hope it was helpful. If you have friends or family that are suffering from this problem, feel free to share our video. Again, thank you for watching our video. I'm Dr. Ed Kleeman.